To use the glossary feature, follow these steps. First, turn editing on. Next, add an activity and select glossary. Now, glossary is a really good way to do just that. Create a glossary. Typically, in a textbook, the glossary sits at the back of the book. Um, it you can't edit it or change it. It's just kind of there. Um, it's it's just used as a reference tool. With Moodle Glossary, uh, your students can actually go in and create the entries. They can add video, they can add picture, they can edit it. Um, you can actually grade it as a teacher. Um, additionally, you can also use the Glossary feature as kind of a FAQ, um, frequently asked question um, feature for your parents or students. Um, you could also use it uh, as a getting to know you activity on the first day where a student might enter their name and then some information about themselves and that kind of stays within Moodle, which is kind of cool. Um, so let's take a look at how to do this. I'm going to uh, just kind of pretend here I'm making a World War II glossary. I'm going to put something like All right, let me just spell check that. Um, now, I could, if I check this, this information will show up in Moodle, and I think I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, uh, we have some decisions to make now. How many entries do you want to view per page? Usually 10 is fine. That's not too many or too, too little. Glossary type. A main glossary is an overall glossary that will automatically link all of your secondary glossaries to. So if you add secondary glossaries, say, to each unit, you could still have a main glossary, and all those entries will ultimately go to that main glossary. Uh, feel free to play around with it, see which one works best for you. Duplicate entries allowed. If you select yes, students will be able to add more than one. Let's say I had uh, Mussolini as an entry here. You could have more than one entries on Mussolini. Uh, this is helpful because if you have uh, so, so many concepts, only a limited number of concepts, but you have more students uh, that need the assignment, you may need to double up on some entries. Uh, if you allow comments on entries, then students and teachers will be able to give feedback. This is good for peer editing. Print view will allow uh, students to print it off. Uh, if you automatically link glossary entries, um, then they'll be linked back and forth between the main glossary and secondary glossary. Um, approved by default, you can choose whether or not uh, you want to um, have it set to you have to approve the post or you have to approve the glossary entry so you can make a decision there. Display format. There's a lot of different styles here. Simple dictionary style is what you're probably going to work with. However, if you wanted to use some of these options, you could as well. Um, feel free to play around with these and get a feel for which one you might like uh, the most. The one I pointed out before was the FAQ. This is kind of a, um, you know, what is what is my policy on homework? You could, students could look that up and see what that is or parents if they wanted to as well. Uh, so feel free to play around with this. Um, leave all of these the same and edit always is the last kind of decision you want to make and that's going to um, at, at one point, at some point, um, the glossary will be closed off when the activity is closed meaning that um, you won't be able to edit it any longer. So that's just what that is. Alright, going back to ratings. You can grade um, glossary, uh, glossary entries. Uh, to do so, changes from no ratings to whatever it is that you want. Average of ratings, count of ratings, maximum, minimum, all this type of stuff. Whatever you wanted to choose. I'll just choose average in this case. Your grading scale uh, is the one that you typically see in Moodle. So you can choose whatever you like there. Um, you can restrict uh, the items uh, within date of the range. If you check this, then after some point, after one point, uh, whatever date you set here, the two uh, won't be able to be graded anymore, edited, or anything like that. The glossary will essentially be closed. So, all right, when you have all that set, go and click Save and Return to Course. And I'm going to turn editing off. Okay. There's my description, and there's my glossary. Now, I'm going to log in here in just a moment as a student to show you what this looks like. But from a teacher's perspective, I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And before I even get started, 
uh, want to talk to you about these things here. First of all, this search will allow you to search glossary entries. Right now we don't have any entries because it's a brand new, brand new glossary. But when we do start adding information, the search will come in handy. Um, to add a new entry, you just click this, and I'll show you that from a student perspective in just a moment. You can also go through all these different uh, letters and search that way. You also have browse by alphabet, category, date, or author. This one is helpful for you when you're grading the assignment uh, to just look up the author real quick. Okay, as a teacher, I want to go ahead and add categories before we even get started. So I'm going to click browse by category. Notice I can edit categories. And I'm going to add category. And I'm going to call this category Battles. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and set to Yes, automatically link this category. And click Save Changes. Notice now I have this category option right here. Okay. So if I click categories, when I click all categories, I have battles now. All right. Now I'm going to log in as a student and show you how to add an entry from a student perspective. Okay, so now I'm logged in as a student and I want to go ahead and add an entry. The entry that I'm going to add is, is D-Day. I'm just going to provide some information about D-Day. So I'm going to click on the glossary. And I'm going to select add a new entry. Okay, concept will be D-Day, and my definition is going to go here. Before I do that, I'm going to select my category. Um, so now it's going to come up under Battles, and I can put what D-Day was. Now I can just put, I'm just going to put, all right. What I can do is also go to uh, any different site that I wanted to and bring that link in as well. Okay. And I can just uh, say highlight this and hyperlink this. Okay. If I wanted to say go to YouTube. Um, I could take a look at this, and if I wanted to, I could go ahead and embed this um, video in as well. I'll just take my share options here, go to embed. This anymore. Um, toggle HTML on. Update. Cool. All right, so now I've got text, I've got a link, I've got video, I could put a picture in if I wanted, all this kind of stuff. Now you can see why uh, using this glossary is a little more powerful than just using the one in the back of your textbook. Okay, I could also add keywords. And I'll separate them this way. Um, so that uh, it becomes searchable at that point. Notice too, I can add an attachment, so I can even add, say, a paper I wrote on this or something along those lines. All right. And I always auto link um, just because it makes the Moodle more interactive. Um, I'd leave that as off, um, and I would leave that as off. So I'm going to click Save Changes. Okay. And as you begin to um, add information and add text here, um, you're gonna, it's gonna, your entries are gonna show up here. And it looks like there's a little bit of a problem with the HTML uh, with that, but that's all right. Um, I can still click here and get my information and all that good kind of stuff. Now, if I start searching and I click say D, it would just bring up all the D entries. If I wanted to look by category, I would go ahead and select my battles category. And it would just bring up the entries under battles. And again with date. 
Okay, it's going to sort by most recent or um, last updated, whatever, however you want to sort that right here. And again, by author. There's Joe Smith's entries. Okay. Now, last thing I'm going to do is log out, log back in as a teacher, and show you how to grade this. Okay, so I'm logged back in as a teacher, and I want to go ahead and grade this entry. So I'm going to click World War II Glossary. I'm going to search by author. Okay, there's Joe Smith. There's his entry. I can read through it, click on the links, um, and I can also click Rate. Come in here. Give Joe 100. Um, if I needed to, I could delete uh, his entry here. And if I wanted to edit it myself, I could do so here. Okay, so it's pretty easy to do from a teacher standpoint. Okay, last thing, I'm going to show you something cool. I can add a block called gl glossary, random glossary entry. Let me show you how this looks. I'm going to go ahead and turn editing on. Scroll down to add a new block. Select random glossary entry. Then go back down and configure the block. I'm going to do so by edit, clicking edit. Um, it's got one glossary. Uh, I'm going to call this all right. Uh, it's going to by default select my World War II uh, glossary ones. Days before choosing a new entry, zero. Um, I could change this to like keep an entry up for five days. Um, it just a random entry or last modified or next entry however you wanted to, to pick but it's going to pick an entry from your glossary and post it on the side of your your um, your course do you want the concept to show yes or no and really the rest of this you can leave as is I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and click save changes now notice here's my d-day entry and if I had more content it would show up there um, so it's kind of a nice way to, um, I guess, enrich your Moodle course. You're taking something that was created right here and having it show up right here. And if I didn't like it there, I could also move it. Go ahead and show you what that looks like, say up to here even. So now every time a student logs into the course, they're going to see an entry that was created by one of their uh, peers. Pretty cool. Okay, so this has been how to use the glossary feature in Moodle 2.